Now in this next part of the question, we're told that the speed of B after the collision is 2 meters per second. So we need to mark that on and obviously it's going to be moving to the right because A is moving to the right. So that's 2 meters per second that we can fill in there. And what we've got to do is we've got to find the mass of B. We've got to find out what M is. Now there's two ways that we could actually do this. And the quickest way is to consider the impulse. Well, this is what I think anyway. If we consider the impulse acting on B, it's going to be exactly the same in magnitude as it was acting on A. And we found in the earlier part that I was equal to 16 newton seconds. So if I use the impulse equation, that was that I equaled the change in momentum, mv minus mu, then you'll find that this falls out very easily. So we need a plus direction again if we're going to consider b. So let's just put consider b. And the plus direction is best taken in the direction always of the impulse. So in this part, I'm going to take the plus direction to the right. So put that in there, that that's the plus direction. So we've got the impulse I, which is 16 newton seconds. So we can put 16 equals M, and M is M in this, times the final velocity V, which is 2. It is 2 because it's going in the positive sense. Then we have minus the mass again times the initial velocity. Well, we can see the speed is 3, but the velocity is directed towards the left. So we've got to the right as positive, so we must mark in minus 3 there. And if we work out this equation, we've got 16 equals 2m plus another 3m, so we've got a total of 5m. So clearly, m equals 16 fifths. Okay, so that's one way that we could do this. The other way is by considering the conservation of momentum. So I'll show you how that one works, okay? Let's just put it here, by the conservation of momentum. So what is the conservation of momentum? Well, you should know that the momentum before impact equals the total momentum after impact, providing no external forces act on the system. And there are no external forces acting on the system, like friction or anything like that. So we can say that the momentum before, so momentum is mass times velocity. We need a positive sense, by the way, so let's take to the right as positive. You can take to the left, it doesn't matter, as long as you stick to your sign convention. So, momentum before, we we'll start with A, it's going to be 4 for the mass, times the velocity, the initial velocity, which would be 5 plus 5, okay? So put that in. Add the momentum, the initial momentum of B, so we've got M for the mass, times the initial velocity. Now we've got 3 acting in the negative sense, so it's going to be minus 3. Equals the momentum after the impact. So we start with A again, the mass is 4, multiplied by the velocity, the final velocity. We've got 1 in the positive sense, so that's going to be 1. Add the momentum of B, so that's M again for the mass, times the velocity. And it's going to be 2 in the positive sense, so that's plus 2. So what we need to do is just simplify this. And if you do that, you've therefore got 20 minus 3M equals 4 plus 2M. And if I add 3m to both sides and take 4 from both sides, can you see that we get, and I'll just come down through here, we get 20 take away 4 which is 16 equals 5m, and so again if we divide by 5 we get m equals 16 over 5, 16 fifths. So you can either do this question then 
by looking at the impulse acting on B or by the conservation of momentum. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this question.